Right. And I was going to do a, like a mixtape series, just rapping over different beats. And somebody, somebody put me on the spot on social media, like, why do that when you could just come out with your own production? Right. You know, every producer, right. like, you had so many different projects with so many different producers. Why not give them their shine? Right. And then on top of that, if there's producers out, I, I get so many producers that from just not even just like. Uh, that I've met like along the way that I've like, yo, Franks, let's work, let's work. Right. Now to give me an opportunity to work with all of them. Oh! This is the crazy! <laughs> it's your boy Moogie getting money is more than likely. It's another episode of No Scope TV. I got the homie Stevie Franks out here, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We out here alongside. We kicking it. Absolutely. Back in the trap, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> But for, for sure, for sure, man. Stevie Frank, hardest working man on the indie scene, bro. Yeah, I bro. just peeped. I just peeped that you dropped like six projects since like 2020. Been more than that. Yeah, more than that, including the EPs. Right, exactly. The three for three killing them, man. Uh, yeah, that the yeah. new John with uh, and Nice, and nice you yeah. know what I'm saying? Jersey's finest. Yeah. I got another joint coming with my man, uh, Sag the Arson, and we dropped dropping this month. It's called Truth. All you know right. I mean? My goal, my goal for uh, just for this, they picking up. Yeah, it's you know, picking up. My goal for um, for this year, just in general, um, is to drop a project for every month. True, true, so, indeed. So it's a uh, it's an EP for every month for this year. That was just the main goal that I had. You know what I mean? Just I, I try to treat every year like it's like my last. You right, know what right, I'm saying? right. Um, because I've been doing it for a minute, man. I've been independent for like. I want to say probably it'll be 10 years in December. So that's a long time, you know what I mean? 10 years go by quick. Yes, you know I mean? yes it does, bro. And, uh, you know, just um, consistency has always been the the best thing for me. Right, you know, right. It's always worked. I mean, you know, everybody has, like, the uh, singles and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm an art dude, man. I, I like making bodies of work. You know right. what I mean? That's just always been my main thing. But, I mean, I do have single-worthy stuff, so... I told myself next year I'm really going to start like pushing more of just individual music instead of full blown projects. Okay. It's hard to push a project that you release in every month. <laughs> right, and right, then right. Put money behind it every month. Right. So you got to give the people some time. Nah, you know for saying? real. It's like, you know, people would digest music differently now. Like, it's like they might listen to it for one day and then they go on to the next. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. Every Friday, new music coming out. Facts, bro. Yeah. It's too much music. But shit, I, like, it was just crazy how I just peeped because I just looked at it all at once. So I'm so used to just getting it dropped. Like, all right, my man Frank's got another one. All right, then I look up like, damn, this nigga dropped the discography in like two years. <laughs> like, yeah, like you really out here going hard. And you got, you working with the, uh, what's it, three for three, right? So yeah. it's a different producer, uh, East John. So right. you got the John with uh, Prime Mega, mm -hmm. Tracator, right? It's yeah. for the other one. And then yeah. it was uh, DJ, um, what's it? DJ King Flow. DJ King Flow, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. All them shits is hard. Like, that was brilliant. Like, what gave you that idea to even um, you start know, doing that? You know, I, I, I come from the, the mixtape era, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't really, I'm not that old, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I, I'm saying, like, you know, I was a young boy listening to the mixtapes that came out uh, every so often. Right. And I was going to do a, like a mixtape series, just rapping over different beats. And somebody, somebody put me on the spot on social media, like, why do that when you could just come out with your own production? Right. You know, every producer, right. like, you had so many different projects with so many different producers. Why not give them their shine? Right. And then on top of that, if there's producers out, I, I get so many producers that from just not even just like. Uh, that I've met like along the way that I've like, yo, Franks, let's work, let's work. Right. Now to give me an opportunity to work with all of them. Sure. As opposed to just having one solid single producer. Like shout out to Track Kaida. I started my career off with them, right. uh, so to speak. Him, them and my man D Wills from down the block. Okay. Um, he actually helped me with my uh, my first like official, official, official mixtape. Like he recorded, I'm gonna say maybe about like 85% of it. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, Track Hyder, I love them. They gave me my first uh, real solid production deal situation. I'm um, always going to love them for that. Um, but, you know, I had, I wanted to expand my creativity. So I started working with different producers, like, you know what I'm saying? Just changing up, you know, because it, it, I have the potential to do a lot. I mean, like me, bro, on some real type time, 
If I could rap and tell stories all the time, I probably would. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Like, but That'd I, be the best tracks, man. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I I can't do it every song. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Because right. it's like, you know. You get into your. Uh, right. I have a. I have a female fan base. Right. So right. I can't be like, they be like, oh, well, we like that one joint. I don't know about all that <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because right. want, at the end Every of the, track can't be Brenda got a baby. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, like, I gotta, it's, it's hard because my creativity doesn't always show me to do that particular, I guess, hit, hit or a radio hit right. record. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, um, I really try to go off what I feel, and each and every producer gives me a different feel. That's okay. why I do that. You know what I mean? Well, speaking of hits, bro, to John, uh, talk to him on uh, Jersey's Finest. I think it's on Jersey's Finest, right? Mm -hmm. That's a hit, bro. You got <laughs> y'all got to get out here. Y'all got to put the y'all put the the 1995 Bad Boy budget into that video, bro. <laughs> really do that, man. That's that's one of them Johns. It'll be like. Yeah. You ever just go back and just listen to like, God damn, like yeah. that's one of them joints. Like, I need the hype Williams video for this shit. Oh man, nah, nah, <laughs> that, that, that would be love, man. That would, that would be love, man. We try, we try and get that hype Williams money up. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. You know, that's that's all. That's all it's about. But that 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 song, um, I ain't gonna front, man. Aunt Nice orchestrated the majority of it. I was just there to write the music. Okay. So like, he was. That's why. I didn't call that three for three. I called that Jersey Finest because right, right. I wanted him to kind of like take the wheel with it and I just kind of follow, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, uh, one thing about Ant Nice, Ant Nice is a, uh, he's a, he's a, um, I'm going to say a, a leader, right? right? So he knows how to, I'm, I'm a leader myself, but I just wanted to take the back seat on that one. Like, yo, bro, you, Real you know what I mean? Like, you take that you do that you yeah. know what I'm saying because he was really on it he was really enthusiastic about it I think that it, this was like I don't know if it was like his original uh I don't know if it was like his 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 uh first release since okay. but I don't think so I think he might have released like a one EP before that okay. but I think he just felt very strongly about this record so I was okay. like I had to let him just go ahead and do that I didn't, I didn't want any control of it I like whatever he went the business side yeah. uh uh, putting out for distribution, I let him do all that because okay. I felt like I just wanted that. Number one, I trust him, and then yeah. uh, number two, he just has a, a, a strong presence, just as a, 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 a figure anyway. All you know right. what I mean? So I felt like he 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 orchestrated the majority of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, being a man of uh, of many hats, I should say, uh, do a lot of entrepreneurship. I mean, with the graphic design and, you know what I mean, your biz the music business and everything else. Mm -hmm. Do you feel music is even still lucrative right now to like, because I know that's, like, that's that's the music can sometimes bring that slow money or bring you big chunks right, and then right, it'll just right. stop. I think, I think anything can work if you got a plan. Okay. I think that the problem is, is that we, us as artists, we gotta know how to step out into an artist chair. Okay. Sometimes, if you don't know how to do that, we need to hire somebody and put somebody exactly. in position in order to do it. Like you were just talking to me about what you were doing for your channel. Like, yeah. yo, I need somebody to go. That's yeah, you need it. It takes a team, bro. Yo, listen, man. You can't be an expert in everything. Right. Throughout my career, like I've done, I've done that before because it's just, it's hard to like just just doing stuff all by yourself. Right. You can't. It's it's hard. You know what I'm saying? It's so, all time, man. Right. So. Um, I would say like put somebody in position in order to help you get to where you have to get to but at the end of the day all of it's going to cost money but think about business right Right. sometimes you'll have a like alright granted like I've been doing art period since I was about 7 years old when I started doing the, uh, the graphic arts and multimedia business it took off and gained leg on its laying legs on its own because it's something that I've been playing seeds in since I was young definitely so I it, see it so I see your graphic design work everywhere the unique yeah. branding right yeah the unique branding I see that shit every time I see somebody got a logo I'm like damn Frank did that John yeah. you did my shit yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah bro you really out here yeah I appreciate <laughs> it but nah but uh um it some sometimes certain things gain legs um and then you won't really have to budget yourself but eventually in order to go to that next level you will have to oh, just sure. like even rap artists like let's say you just dope and just this person's art i'm pretty sure we know mad artists that's like super dope right but they kind of reached the pinnacle because 
they need that extra push or they need money in order they to need get help over that hump. Right. It's just the same thing for anything. And like, I just feel like you just, number one, I would tell people, know the business, like know, get your publishing right. Um, let's get talk to an entertainment lawyer. Um, and then it, it the makes mu- you the music business is more business than music right at the end of the day. exactly because now it has to be because you know granted you know when when i was growing up it was like it was only a select few of rappers it wasn't like you know everybody everybody the rapper that was popping you knew that rapper already right so it was like you are everybody knew him. now it's like there's a rapper somewhere that's dope as fuck but nobody knows that person you know what I mean? That's how right. many rappers it is. Like, right. it could probably yeah. somebody sitting there, right there, right now. He's nice as shit. He got his shit on all streaming platforms. That nigga probably got twenty thousand followers, but I've never heard of him. Exactly. It could be even more. Like, it could be somebody selling. They doing Billboard numbers. You ain't never hear of them. It's mm-hmm. been so many niggas. But then you don't hear of that nigga until he gets shot. So exactly. I'm like, who? They're right. like platinum selling artists. Right. Like, bro, I listen to music every day. I follow right. this shit. Right. Where the fuck ball come from? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's so many um, rappers now. They, they right. I think if they said it's like a hundred thousand uploads to to uh, to streaming every day. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot. They bro. said it was a certain amount that wasn't even listened to in a year, like that's over a year. Crazy. Like, and then I was watching a uh, documentary on Rockefeller. They said that there was an office where they would have CDs and just and tapes and just toss them. Can you imagine how many how many times either the labels are probably listening to it? They said I think it was like the first five seconds they could tell if they want to listen to your music or not. That's crazy. And and like and then it's like it's so hard to me. I feel like the work to to trust a label right now would be difficult because. It ain't even about the label, it's about the people. Right. Like, they the one that judge what's All hot. All a label you know can saying? really do for a person that's in the going in the right direction is giving them money exactly. to do what they need to do. Like, exactly. it's like a really, like, a bank loan. Like, if you're right. just out here and you take a label, a deal's going to change your life. Like, bro, that's not, it's not. It's not realistic. Like, bro, you got to already yeah. be moving and shaking before you even get to even talk to a label. Like, you should already be earning money and earning streams and having a following before you Facts. even go sit down. Like, niggas Facts. be out here dropping to nobody right. and then be like, I need to get signed because I'm nice. Like, bro, you're not profitable. No, nah, they, they don't. See, that's another thing, too. It's like, it's different now. Like, before, you used to be able to, like, rap and stuff and then have, like, no business sense. Right. You can't do that now. Hell it's no. impossible. You cannot. You got to be a full-time. Yeah, you can't, you can't yeah. be out here rapping and then not have any sense of business whatsoever right it's impossible you can't do it that's 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 foolish if we really being honest like you can't it's a waste of money yeah like you, in like, time and energy yeah you might as well consider it like a, a paid hobby right right that's what it's doing and then and if you're not you gotta have, like that's why i tell people like you gotta have goals with this shit like right you know what i mean if you don't really have like a solidified goal with it you know what i'm saying like and you know sometimes you know me being me being a, a believer of the creator like you you just don't like really know what's in the cards for you yeah exactly. music might be another way for other doors to open up for your situation right. you just never know you just have to take some if you, you want to do something right if you want to do something you just gotta take the steps you just gotta take a leap bro like that i live my life by that like right just taking leaps and certain stuff you okay. know what i'm saying but to so. be completely honest with you though I don't even know what the what the rap game is right now. Like, I don't even know what they like. What is hot? Like, yeah. people be on fire, Billboard ch- charting, right. platinum albums, and the shit, and not even to be on some old real hip hop shit. The shit right. genuinely be trash. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's genuinely trash. It's not catchy. It's right. just like y'all niggas just did. They, you got with somebody that was good at the music business, right. like. Nowadays, you can be good at the music business and not have good music, but you can still be, you can make money. And most of it, it'd be smoke and mirrors. It'd right. probably come out at the, it'd probably come out when them albums drop and them ticket sales go yeah, up. Yeah. But you can be popping out here and be complete trash. You're like, you'd be like a gimmick that's like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I was just looking at a certain artist and like certain music and shit. Like, I'm a fan of all the fuck shit, all the trap shit. Future, my favorite rapper. <laughs> But it's just like nah, some of this shit, bro. Some of this shit is just ridiculous, bro. I and mean, I don't understand it. 
I like don't, why? I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like I honestly, on on the real, if we want to be honest, like we talking for reality, I feel like that a lot of them probably like come from the streets, right? So they probably already have like um, some type of real strong financial backing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Meaning like they probably already have like you know a strong budget behind them. If not, it, it's it's see now it's just like different areas, different times. Like if uh, the majority of these independent artists that are popping, they probably coming from Atlanta or something. Right, right. Like Atlanta is like the land of the hustlers, dog. And it's like, like the black millionaire. It's right. like black Hollywood. Exactly. Yeah. So like imagine how many people out there are getting money. And then imagine how many times they run across an artist who they feel as though got potential. He look like he do something. Right. Then they go ahead and put bread behind the nigga, and then all of a sudden he blow up. You know what? A lot of that shit is too. People be a fan of the person and not the music. Yeah. Shit. So it'd be like you could just be a, a popular person or just like have charisma and people like you and shit. Right. But your music is trash, but niggas is still gonna fuck with you just because they like you on social media. Right. So you dropping music and niggas is gonna listen to it because they, they're fucking with you anyway. Right, no, it's uh, it's, it's, de it's definitely weird, man. Like, that's why I tell people, man, don't try to copy nobody. Don't try to do, just do you and stay true to yourself. Like, Facts. When, I, when I stayed in my lane and just kept doing what I'm doing and I was just being me, I didn't have. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? We back. We back. We back. <laughs> it's your boy Mookie getting money this month. Like we had a little intermission. Uh, yeah. Shit. Uh, shit. I see you out here training and boxing and shit. Yeah. 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 So you doing the training or you training for a fight? What, what's, what's up with nah, that, bro? Man, you um, about to get out here with, with Haney and them? Nah. nah <laughs> um, I, 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 I competed long years and years and years ago when I was like in high school. Okay. I started like training, competing, and um, I stopped because um, I started playing basketball and I okay. stopped. You know what I mean? Um, only issue is the difference between basketball and boxing is boxing is an individual sport. Okay. Basketball yeah. is a team sport. Right, right. I sucked. I was I was good at basketball. <laughs> right. But I, I, my organization of skills was terrible. Right. So right. like I was I was too streeted out. You know what I'm saying? I was throwing it between my legs, behind my you head. You was doing the AI shit. Yeah. Like, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I, didn't, I was I was like mad nervous. I really didn't know all the plays and stuff like that. But boxing was very. Uh, came naturally to me in a way I, I, I ain't gonna front though when I first started learning I had two left feet yeah yeah so I had I, I, I was I had got after a while I got my forward together I, f I fell off years down the line I did a prison step mm -hmm. I came home and I you know I wanted to do something different so I said you know I, I started doing MMA okay so I did MMA for like a year I had to stop because my parole officer said that it was feeding into my violent tendencies whatever the hell, <laughs> whatever the hell that meant I never There's always I, some bullshit yeah I never went I never did a violent crime in my life you know what I'm saying I'm not I'm not stupid like that was one of the things I understood when I was running around is that you can't get money and then and be violent. violent. You can't yeah. do that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I tried to stay far away from it as much and as I could. You definitely don't want to mix it to. Nah. We try you know not saying? to anyway. Yeah, so um, what happened was how I got back into it was um, I got real sick like four years ago. I realized I was diagnosed with a, uh, an autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis. Oh. Right. And what that does, good. yeah, nah, it's all good, man. Like, you could, you could deal with it. I, I tell people now, like, don't, you can listen to the doctor somewhat, but don't listen to him 100%. Right. Because you, if you do the research, you do the work, you can help heal yourself. Right, you definitely. You understand what I'm saying? Especially the information is out there. Exactly. So what happened was I had to focus on how to properly heal myself. Okay. You know what I mean? So what happened was uh, once I changed my diet, I started working out again. But I don't know, weight weightlifting and the regular fitness kind of got boring to me. And I and I was like, what am I doing this all for? Like, I want, nah, I gotta make my, sure my hands sharp. Right, right. So I was like, no, let me just start messing around with it. So I started doing like little heavy bag stuff. And then like, just, just get my feet back in the water. Because like I said, I never got past the two left feet part. Right. But then I started like training with different trainers and Martial arts trainers and Do you have like a, like a home gym? Do you have like a certain gym you came train um, with? I went to uh, a few times. I went to uh, to D Boys Gym. Oh, that's where yeah. my son was going. To. Yeah, right I went, went there in. a few times. Uh, I went there, uh, shout out to my boy Timmy Stokes. I never. I started. Uh, like I went up there a couple times, but it wasn't like regularly. 
But then, like, I started going to different gyms um, and just started training with them. And then, like, my man, he's a uh, he's a black belt martial artist, and he knows different forms of martial arts. So I started training with him regularly, um, okay. just dealing with different dealing with different trainers at a time, and I just started getting sharper and sharper and sharper. Then I started training myself. I started sparring. Um, just learning to, you know, you want to learn through two ways, through progress or pain. Right, right, You know right. what I'm saying? So I started learning from it's both. It's shit get different when you start sparring. It's yeah, way different I, I started learning from both because, you know, I started having, started getting hit in the head, in the nose, face, started having headaches, all kind of stuff. But right, you, right. You, you, you learn what to do, what not to do. But I, I just, you know, I, I just love, I, it's, it's another art form to me, and I just love, I love the sport. So I, I fell in love with it. I went, I walked into the gym, 225, left two, 170. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I trimmed all the way down. Uh, this is probably the strongest and, 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 and the most in shape I've ever been in my whole life. Right. So like, um, and then when I be in the gym, I was I was trained, I was getting trained. Then after a while, I started being in the gym training with my brother. People started walking up to me like, yo man, you, you, are you the local trainer here? I'm like, nah, but you can take my number. And then after a while, I just started building and building and building and people just started hitting me like, you know, people would say uh, they want to get trained in the art of boxing. I would show them, you know what I'm saying? And I was I started doing beginners classes. Yeah. So it was just something like, I just something that I loved. And I was just like, you know what, let me just be in service to the people. And I just started just sharing it. You know wow, wow. You know so you I mean? a trainer, graphic designer, artist. You just <laughs> out here Bro, killing, like, bro. nah, bro. Like, you know what's funny, man? Like, if anybody can, man, read the book, The How to Be Good at Almost Anything. Right? That's okay. that's a real book. I read that book and I applied it. It's called it's, the rules called the 80-20 rule. Right. You don't have to be a master at everything 100%. Mm -hmm. You only need 80% to be a master at anything. Take the other 20% of energy that you would have for that 100 and then add it to another skill. And then stack on that. And then just work. It and then, then really honestly, bro, I really think time management Facts. is what it's all about. Like, you know what I mean? With me. And plus, I, 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 I loved it. You know, I love this. Something that I constantly was learning, constantly watching, something constantly applying. You know what I mean? And then I, I had, I had the heart to get beat up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, yeah. you know, a lot you gotta of people, be able to take the punch. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Some people don't have the heart to get beat up. Some people don't have the heart to look stupid. Like I didn't care. Like it was just something I wanted to learn. Like, and then I just started applying it to myself. And then not only that, but it just uh, it helped my self confidence in, in, in me. All you right. Know what I mean? Yeah, so I, I, that was going to be my next question. Like, you feel as though that does that help with your uh, clear your mind? Like, that help, does has that help your pen? It's funny you say that. Um, Cause they say stuff like running and yeah. like like running and walking I, and doing like I can't really exercises say, I can't in like really, a meditative I, state. I can't really say, bro. Like, if, if if I'm gonna be frank with you, bro, I feel like me. Being a better writer, I can't really call it where it come from. Like, <laughs> I'll right. be, I'll be honest with you. Like, it, I've been doing this for so long, it's like I don't know where it comes from. Right. It's just automatic. Right. Or like I have to be in. It's like a certain bag. Like I told you, did you your ten thousand hours, bro. You right. Got, you were a professional. Right. Like I told you. Like I, I, I tell. Like I remember one time I was in this. This is how I could tell how I blew past my man. Right. So. We in the studio, we writing, cause he was used to be way better than me. But I sat back and wrote my verse in 20 minutes and I can't, I smoked it. He only had 16, I had like 24, mm. I smoked it. He was like, nah, bro, you ain't gonna do me like that. I said, man, don't be a punk, man, drop that record. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right, he, right. he was mad, he, he didn't Please wanna drop it. On the, yeah. You punching on records. Well, you know, that's what happened, bro. Like, you you get you get, you get get soft. Like, 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 there's a lot of people that were way better than me with, with their hands. And yeah. now that now that, that I've been when you, when you do it every day and when you practice and when you really in, you know when you getting when you running when you working out you doing the cross training the weight training you right. you doing the exercises you jump the rope you, you sparring you 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 hitting the mitts like you you're doing uh, different conditioning the footwork exercises when you're doing all these different things you're constantly conditioning yourself every day to become better at that right I'm of course. Of course I'm going to beat you. Of course I'm going to beat you up. Yeah. You're not doing this every day. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that, that's like, just like rap. He might be nice, 
But if I'm doing it every you day, rap for six months. I'm gonna get better. <laughs> right, right. Like, like, just for instance, like, um, I think I might have told, I think I might have told you this story before. Like, just with art, period. Like, when I was younger, there was a dude. Um, his name was uh, Travis Searles. Man, shout out my man Chill. He was seven years old. He sat across from me in second grade. He could draw you, but he was, he was that young. He was good, Damn. right? And uh, I was like. I was amazed, I was baffled. Not not I couldn't draw back then, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I just kept kept copying and and, and, and and just my mom put me in like after school programs, summer courses, you know what I'm saying? Just keep feeding my skills. Right. I put that time and energy in. While as opposed to him, he, he didn't really natural, he, natural Yeah, gift. he ain't really work as hard as me because he just had that natural gift, had to work hard. Now now I'm not saying that he's not in a good position in life because I see I've seen him on you know what I'm saying on, on these platforms and I see he's right. doing great, but I don't know if he's doing it full time like I am now. Oh, okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I really took it as a general solid passion and I ran with it, I stuck with it, and then you know the universe worked in my favor. You know? Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, they always say uh, hard work beats talent if talent don't work hard. Nah, that's a fact. I mean, shout out to Young Chris. Right. <laughs> I don't know if you're the first nigga to say it, yeah. but he the nigga I remember who said it. Nah, nah, man. <laughs> yo, yo, another thing, shout out to Young Chris, too, man. He's one of the best rappers in Philly, dog. And I think that he don't get that recognition that he deserves. He like, don't. You know what I'm saying? He definitely one of the best rappers in Philly, man. Shout out to Chris, man. He. He dope as shit, man. Yeah, Philly, a rapping ass city, man. Nah, on on everything, bro. Like, <laughs> hey, the really? town, the town. If that, the thing is, man. Sometimes I feel like just just that industry, um, don't. I don't know what it is with a lot of these artists in Philly. Like, some of them pop, don't get it messed yeah. up, but like a lot of them don't. They say Philly, man, Philly too real, bro. Yeah. yeah I think it yeah. is. It's hard, bro. It's yeah. hard. You if you do some shit, you gotta get the fuck up out of there. Yo, it's it's so it's 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 a. Uh, Anybody that I know that that really popped from Philly left. Yeah, they left you gotta get the fuck up out of there. Yeah. Once you got some traction, nigga, run for the hills. I mean, you can come yeah. back, but nigga, don't live there. Nah, man. You all the niggas, like, the whole state property really is state property. They all got locked up at one point. Only <laughs> nigga I think that wasn't in prison at one point of their run was Chris, I think. I think yeah. he might, he he might have been. Cause I, I remember Neef was even locked up. I'm like, damn, yeah. where the fuck Neef at? Yeah. That nigga was locked up. Petey was locked up. Free uh -huh. was locked up. Had to come home. Start state property. Beans always locked up. Yeah. All yeah. them niggas, dog. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's, 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 it's real because and they was the bro. They was the nicest, in my opinion. That's the nicest rap group. Like skill wise, they might haven't got all the accolades, but right. skill wise, I don't think no rap group was ever fucking with them, bro. Yeah, nah, it was it was too many of them. But they not it wasn't I, it was skilled. They were very skilled rappers. But I think it was just uh, they never got to the point of like they never got their commercial success like that. Like I, I think I, they got it, but like not where like on a Wu Tang level or something. Oh uh, yeah, nah, nah, not at all. I mean, I th I don't know, man. I feel like you know, being sold, Freeway sold, uh, the Young Guns sold. Petey never dropped. Petey album. never dropped. Um, Oskino and Sparks never, never dropped. dropped album. But they went fucking hood platinum. Yeah. I definitely had some Oskino oh, tapes. Yeah. I had all that shit, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, like with them, I think it's just uh, they were too real for the industry. Yeah. Like they, they, they were. Really... It is a different time too. Right. I think it'll be different if it was a social media era, and you oh, can yeah. you could be a master of your own destiny now. Oh, like yeah. back then, like the label could just turn your fucking water off. That's yeah. it. Go the fuck home. This shit is over. Right. Like that. That's another reason why I cats like independently right now. Like Oskino may not be rapping like that now, but like if he really wanted to, he probably could go platinum in the street. Yeah, you know he did saying? a couple times, bro. Yeah, yeah. Word. I forget what the Joe was. The appetizers. I appetizers think. Appetizers seven. Yeah, he had. Yeah, like, I, one, I was yeah, wondering he, too. He, he was uh, he was um doing his thing for years, but like that, that last one that he dropped, you could definitely see the accolades coming from it. Like he was probably one of the highest. Paid or selling independent artists out there. Yeah, I see this nigga in like a cor like a fucking Corvette. Yeah, right. <laughs> he, he another um he another smart businessman too. Like you know what I'm saying? He's real. He's real, I think he's real heavy in like the truck and stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like that's why I, that's why I, like I tell rappers now like yo if you independent it's gonna be hard for you if you're just a rapper. There's no such you, thing, bro. Nah, you want you, you gotta you want to wear multiple hats along the way because like you know as you were just talking about like the work thing like if you got a job it's 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 hard to um 
That's all your time. Work a nine to five job and then be a rapper. Like if you if not if you just want to rap and then you don't want to have a job, you gonna have to hustle Back. hard as shit. You know what I mean? Like you gonna have to get like more, way more than one. You know what I mean? Definitely, man. But shit, you you've been killing it, bro. And like you said, a lot of people don't even really know your story too much that you really like you came home from and you was a felon you couldn't get no like you said you it was hard to get work and all that and you, you made a way for yourself like that needs to be highlighted more especially in black men like bro you don't have to be a rapper but you can make a way for yourself Absolutely. like what just gave you like the i guess you, like yeah what just gave you the discipline to just like say fuck it i'm gonna stay out the streets like I'm going to just do the right thing. Like, it takes... I know that takes... Because you can easily go do a one-two, shake some shit up, and, you know what I mean, get it done. But what kept you, like, nah, I'm going to stay on the straight and narrow and do what I got to do? You know what I mean? I mean, honestly, when it came to the street stuff, it was never really, like... That was never really the plan to stay in it. Right, right. Like, I was already when... I mean, when I first started messing around, I was, like, uh, you know, just doing it for, like, clothes and sneakers and stuff like that when I was in high school. Yeah. Just getting little jewelry, little, little BS, you know what I mean? Like, wasn't, like, um, may, may, maybe for, like, just little stuff. But, like, to be honest with you, um, it was just for play money when I was in school. Yeah. Then, like, later on, uh, when I stopped because somebody who I was running with, he got, uh, he got murdered. So that kind of scared me a little bit. Um, I quit for a while. Um, after I quit, um, I, I was going to school, an art school in Philly. And uh, I was going, I, my, me and my people were going through a tough time when I was in school. So it was like, all my friends that I went to high school with, they was active. Like, so they pulling up new cars, they wide full of money. And I'm struggling just to get home, taking the train every day. Right, right. So, like, you know, me, I, I like, I like, I ain't gonna front, man. I like to get fresh. I like to look like something. I ain't wanna just be walking around looking like a bum. And, uh, you know, one day, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I think I spent my last, like, on some books or something like that. I was uh, trying to get home, taking the train. I was a nickel short from taking the train. I had to beg for change just so I could get through the turnstile because I ain't want to do the foul shit and just jump over. Right. And I was just like, yo, never again. Never again. And I'm then when, then when I had that, I was just, after a while, I think I was angry at the world that it, that I had to do it. And then, like, the thing about it is, hustling came so naturally to me. It was scary because once I figured out how it worked, it just, just, right. just took off. Like, it was just like... I understood that, you know, um, you had to be well averse in customer service. Right, right. So I knew what they wanted. I knew when certain people weren't available. I knew when to be available. Um, I knew to have a certain type of product. And then when I understood that having that great product, I put a stamp on the product. And then I stayed with what's called a, a, a company motto. And I stuck with it. And I didn't... I, I, I can count how many times probably on one hand that I probably went out the whole time I was hustling. I think I probably, you know, everybody was like, yo, we going out Friday. I'm like, shit, I think it's crazy. I ain't going nowhere. Okay. You know this what I'm saying? Is so, so uh, hot New Year's Eve, it's the first of the month. Y'all bugging. I'm not going nowhere. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my mentality. Like, I always wanted to be able to have more or put the work in and then be able to see results. The only issue is about being in that game that you're going to get. You guys, there's a lot to come along with that. Yeah, definitely. Like, you no, know, like, uh, I understood, like, you know, people won't be jealous of, you, you know what I mean? And like I said, I wasn't, I'm not going to say, you know, certain people get in there when they, they get tough or they really like that, they get, that has to be bred in them. Like, something have to happen to you in order for you to want to establish a certain amount of pain on somebody else just right, regularly right, right. all the time. Yeah. And I wasn't like that. I was I was raised, I, I came from a pretty solid family. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, we wasn't rich or nothing, but we was middle class. You know what I mean? My mom, she she worked at a computer desk job. My dad mopped floors for a living. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? But they still, like, they were still around. You know what I'm saying? They I'm, provided. Right. And, you know, I, me and my father, I ain't going to front and say, like, everything was peaches and cream because it wasn't. 
You know what I mean? But I grew up around a lot of the, like it was it was hard for me to uh it was hard for me to, to 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 get away from the drug stuff, dog. Like it was just so it was in front of my face. My neighbors was drug dealers. My neighbors was crackheads. You know what I'm saying? Everybody smoked. And weed. if you're not from you know that I mean? kind of shit, you will never understand that shit. Yeah, yeah. Like being like it's like being a black man at that that age from the age of like 16 to like 25 there's some dangerous ass years because you can go mm-hmm. any way because i look at my life a lot like it's some dumb shit that i did but i didn't even realize i could have just fucked my whole life up nah, i could have fucked my whole life up mad times but like when you young and you don't got the information or like the knowledge of yourself Right. Like, you don't got the information, you can really fuck yourself over nah, and don't even real, know it until you fucked over. For real. And I, it happens all the time, bro. Right. So, so, yeah. so to get to answer your question and not to go too far on a tangent, um, it, I, it, it came from my, my foundation. I'm not going to lie. I had a uh, you know, shout out to my man Raheem. Raheem had a lot to do with my reform. He see me walking around, busting tracks, coming around the corner. And he had his, matter of fact, his shop was right here. Over here on the corner, right, right down there, he had a corner store. Okay. He was he the first person to have like a clothing store, a corner store out here. Um, my man used to say he started with 14 T-shirts and turned it into a store. Damn. But nah, he, he did. He just, just hustled, man. Just um, and uh, he was my age. I think he might have been might a year older. Mine thing was my age, and uh, just watching him doing his thing. 21, 22 years old with a store that's, that's unheard of. Like, 20, I ain't know nobody 21, 22 was doing anything yeah, like man. that. Like, he, 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 he started a milestone young, and um, and he had it, and, and it was kind of crazy because when I he see me doing my thing, I walk around, do whatever I'm doing, and he be like, here, smile at me. So he come to the store, show me stuff. I, I was, I think I was one of the first people to support his store. Matter of fact, okay. I went. I think I bought me like a pair of J's, some 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 jeans and, and a shirt or something. And uh, it was just um, he just trying to you know support him, but he was just a good good dude. Yeah. And he was one of the first people after I, after I got incarcerated uh, when I came home. He was one of the first people to like embrace me and like kind of like more so feed the the positive. Um, aspect of my life more than like the negative and then you know I, my my mother like my mother was throughout every negative step that I took my mom used to always tell me like good or bad I'm gonna be your biggest fan mm. so my mother just stayed with me. my grandma same thing stayed with me like they didn't give up on me you know what I mean my mother my, I think that was my grandmother in court. I think my grandmother might have been in court. I think it was my mother my grandmother my father my girlfriend at the time, and I think my brother, they all came to court for me. So, in order for me to come home, I needed sponsors. Okay. If not, they was going to have to put me in a house where I'd be, like, closely monitored. In a halfway house or some shit like Something that. like that, probably. But, like, the higher, they, they, didn't want, they didn't want to give me. So, when I came home, I came on a program called ISP. Oh, yeah, I know. ISP yeah. is an intense supervisional program. It's, just, it's like it's like parole times two. And it's like, like set up for you to go back to jail. Right, prison. exactly. It's like prison on the street. I was on ISP probably for me about three years. And um, I probably, I had some small hiccups, but it wasn't nothing crazy. It was like late coming home, little dumb stuff. It wasn't like I didn't never have dirty urine and that type of stuff. Right. One thing about it, I wish I happened when I was young, that I learned from just the boxing and martial arts is that it did. It taught me discipline. Yeah. And that's what kind of thing helped me get through it. And then I never wanted, I never wanted that for myself, bro. I was mad that I was doing it. Like, bro, I'm wrong. Not, not to take anything away from my homies in the streets because I love them all. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wasn't like them. You know what I mean? I had vision. I had goals. I had. Listen, man, I was telling somebody a story the other day. My mom tells me a story all the time. When I was four years old, I told my mom I didn't want to work for nobody and I wanted to have my own. I said this at four. Smart man, smart man. You know what I mean? Well, you lived up to it, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? I said it at four. And, you know, that's what my mom said. She doesn't really see, uh, she knows that this was what it was. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, she was like, it's no surprise. To yeah. her that I'm living the way that I'm living, you understand? Yeah. So like you know, um, so getting out, I'll say changing my life was because it was never in the plan, and then number two was because of my family. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta have that solid foundation. Oh yeah. 
I mean, that yeah, discipline, man. I see it got you here, man. And a lot of people don't bounce back from that. Like, like a lot of people, they succumb to the streets after they figure out, like, bro, I can't go get a job nowhere. I can't do nothing. I'm just going to go. I'm trapping it out. That's a myth, too. Yeah. That's, that's a myth. Like, any, anybody, anybody in the streets, like, you coming home from jail, don't say you can't get a job, bro. When I got home from jail, I had mad jobs. Let me tell you something. My, my, my jacket is probably taller than you. I got fucking hella felonies, bro. I'm not talking like little shit, like big shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff that, you know, I, luckily I had a good lawyer, bro. Like both times, for both cases. If mm -hmm. I didn't, bro, if I had had a public defender, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Dang. I probably would be, but I'd be bitter. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been a rapper. I wouldn't have been doing none of the shit I'm doing. I'd have probably been working in like a factory somewhere. Yeah. Mad as, mad as fuck. Right, you know right. what I mean? But like, but as far as like, just with that alone, like I probably would have been served. I probably would served probably like a dime or better. Cause that was one of the Damn. first plea bargains they tried to give me. They tried to give me a ten with a five. Ooh. Yeah, so it was Stuff. like, yeah. So like that was one of the first ones. If I ain't fight it as long as I did, if I had no loopholes in my cases or nothing, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even talk to y'all right right now. Man, man, that shit's crazy, bro. Yeah. And like when you look at it, it's so many people that fall victim to just fucked up circumstances and not yeah, having yeah. knowledge and not like you said not having a lawyer not having nothing and just be lost in the system yeah bro that's how look at that's that's what happened to him he did my man he did 15 years he did 15 years his mom the only reason why he coming home is because his mom fought for him but they try yeah. to give them they try to get my man 30. he did he, he did that at the time he said yo don't even tell nobody i'm even coming back around yeah. probably because he wants to stay away from it right you know definitely what I'm saying? but like what he don't understand is that Majority of the people that we grew up in, they either, they either dead or they they just come home from doing prison biz on their own. Yeah, or just ain't around no more. So yeah, exactly. That just shit moved, crazy. Moved on in life. You know the what same shit, the same show. My, uh, my hood, where I'm from, there ain't nobody around no more. Yeah. Niggas either dead, locked up, or just moved on in life. Yeah, that's it. That's how it goes. That's that Section Eight. I grew up in Section Eight apartments mm. type shit. Mm. So like, <laughs> it's just a new generation. They yeah. just cycle them out, like, yeah, that's nah, all it is. It's, they, they, and it, it's sad because it's like, I can't really, like, when it comes to the youth and when they doing stuff, I can't really say nothing to them, really, because I understand them. Like, you know, you either go on, if you need it right now, you need it right now. Right. It ain't no, yeah, man, there's another way. Like, man, you need it right now. You need it right now. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? So it's that's like, you got you, you just got to give them, you got to give them the, uh, you gotta give them and let them know this this is gonna be a heavy pitfall of what's coming. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And that's it. It's gonna well, be a heavy, heavy pitfall of what's coming. Well, that's it, bro. Well, speaking of what's coming, what does Stevie Franks got coming in music wise? What you got coming for us, man? Alright, so later on, so like I said, I'm dropping a project um later for every month for the for the rest of the year. Um I got another project coming with uh with Sage the Arts and it's called Truth. Okay. Um, that's it's coming out sometime. Coming out this month, and this month is almost over, but it's gonna be out. <laughs> All right. You know what I mean, um, my, my man just got a time issue, but um, he, he, it, this this work is a, it's a great body of work. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. um, if, if if you it, it's, it's it's coming from a perspective of a, of a grown man rapping in his thirties that's just been through life and understanding okay. certain levels and principles, and anybody and their mother could relate to it. You know what I mean? So I, I know very much so that the rest of the people won't like it. I got another project coming with uh with Trikita, um, another one with Prime Mega. All right. Um, Shout out to Prime Mega. I gotta get up with him too. Nah, I'll sure. get up with both new trees. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they they're uh I, I love Prime Mega because Prime Mega is 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 a, is a, is an architect when it comes to the beats. Yeah, definitely got some heat. Yeah, he, I'm long overdue to be working with him. He's a he's a he's a he's a hit maker. I actually think I got something in the stash for him. At least a couple tracks. Yeah. I don't know. I gotta look, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's another dude. Um, my man Tito Beats. Okay. Um, I got something coming with him. Um, me and Night, me and Aunt Nice going to do another joint. Um, so it's just more work. It's getting put out. I got a show coming up uh, the last Saturday in June. Matter of fact, it's out here. It's a long side, long side day. All right. So if anybody in the area pull up, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a nice joint. I got another joint uh, um, with, with Del P. Oh, um, shit. Del, me and Del, Del P. Doing, yeah. Me and Del P doing a show in July. 
Um, so it's gonna be a night. It's gonna be dope shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's gonna be a lot of. It's gonna be a nice summer. Um, it's gonna be a dope the rest of the end of the year. We got another joint. We about to shoot me and Nice about to shoot the Jersey Finest joint video All joint. Alright, y'all gotta let me know when y'all do that, man. Nah. I'm trying to do some behind the scenes. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell <laughs> yeah. We're gonna be shooting that. Um, so it's just a lot, a lot coming up, man. Me and me and, me and Sage, the Arson run gonna be something dope too. Um, it's gonna be very, very, very dope, man. And then that's only oh me also me and Jen. Me and Jen got a project coming out this year too. Man, bro, um, you out here dropping yeah. them like you got three clones out here working, bro. <laughs> I just, I, I man, listen, man, I, I, fell, I fell in love with my work, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I seen an Instagram reel the other day, dude said, I can't remember the brother's name, but dude said, uh, he said, man, people always ask me what I do for work. He said, man, he said, you know, people always ask me what I do for fun. He said, man, I, this is fun to me. You know what I'm saying? My work yeah. is my fun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't even consider it work. I, I right. consider it just putting out dope shit. Yeah, you know that's a I mean? blessing in itself. Hell yeah, you know what I mean? So that's how, that's how, that's what I look at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, shit, man, this has been another one, man. We're, tell the people where they can find you so we can get up out of here. It's getting a little hot out this year. Nah, no doubt, that, 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 sun, that sun started ripping. All right, um, right. So you can find me uh, on Instagram, Stevie Franks, the artist. Uh, find me on Facebook, Stevie Franks. Um, if you want to like my music page, Stevie Franks Music with a K. Um, find me on Snapchat, Stevie Franks 100. Um, I got to get back on Twitter, man. I ain't been on Twitter in a minute. Yeah, bro, you bro. ain't missing nothing. People are psycho on Twitter, man. Yeah, nah, that's that's like the craziest social media fucking platform. Mm -hmm. Niggas. That's crazy. It's out of control. I was on that Find me on TikTok too, Stevie Franks, the artist. Um, Definitely. Web website, therealstevefranks.net. That's if you want to get put on to like all the shows, all the album releases, new videos, and all that stuff like that. Make sure y'all go on the website, check the website out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Go on my YouTube. Find me. Look it up, Stevie Franks. You're gonna see all my stuff pop up. Every project, every recent video. And there's um, a lot. He got yeah. a whole catalog of shit for you to go through. Yeah, man. So, you know, then, you know, really uh, just follow everything, man. But, you know, mainly I'm on uh, mainly I'm on Instagram and Facebook probably more than anything else. I want to be on more TikTok, man, but it's just so TikTok much. TikTok is the way, man. Yeah. It's so much going on in there. I got to get my TikTok there. life together, man. Nah, it's, it's so much going on in there. It's like uh, <laughs> I don't want to fall down the rabbit hole, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, when I be on TikTok, I, I post in ghosts, bro, like, because... Some people get a misconception of TikTok. Like TikTok ain't just dumb, dumb ass dances. And nah, shit. it's a lot, of, a lot stuff, of you can get a lot of information on that shit. Nah, too. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Like, yo, let me tell you something, man. Like, if you if you like starting a business or or, or you have plans of starting a business or you want to know about uh, you know certain information of financial literacy or you know certain workout plans and bro, they giving up so much information free. Facts. That you don't even gotta even pay for it. They, they right. you pay for the further, more in depth information. Right. But as far as the information of on a surface sense, it's all right there. They giving up free game like all day. And that's why when people say, "Yeah, I'm cutting myself out of social media," but I'm like, you gotta get off the bullshit. Exactly. Like you, you could be all day. Like literally, you get on all day. It's like reading a book. Yeah, you, you literally read a get bunch on there. of bullshit or right. you can read some real right. shit. Right, and now if you on there all day, you just on some goofy shit. You only got yourself to blame for that shit. Right, you know what I mean? But if it's like, come on now. Like, you just got to gotta budget out your time, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, the information is there. But anyway, this has been another episode of No Scope TV. It's just your boy Moogie getting money this one likely. We out this bitch, man. Yeah, yeah. Yo. I'm the man with the iron, leave them all ghosts. Throwing shots, eyes closed. That's a no scope. That's a no scope.